Hi, it's El Cheapo microcontroller time again. I've done cheap, really cheap microcontrollers before. I've done the three cent Paduk microcontroller, so I'll link that up in here and down below. If you uh, want to see that uh, series, where, where I went through actually developing a little uh, project for the three cent Paduk microcontroller. Well, I've got one that's a bit more expensive today. Well, more than three times more expensive, but still only 10 cents. But it is a Risk V micro uh, controller. So the new Risk V processor, everyone's jumping on board. The new Risk V. It's actually the Risk V uh, architecture itself is actually just an instruction set, and it's open source. So this is why a lot of manufacturers, uh, if they get an ARM core, for example, they've got to pay a license fee to ARM Corporation, which means that every cent, every microcontroller you buy has that royalty built on top. Whereas the Risk V architecture, everyone's jumping on board because it's royalty free, and a lot of manufacturers, including major ones, are jumping on board. So the Risk V core is not like a drop-in core that you can get it's just an instruction set so manufacturers are free to like develop their own cores and everything else as long as it follows the instruction set it's a risk 5 uh, microcontroller so we're gonna have a look at this one today uh, which is from a uh, Chinese company called WCH and they make uh, you know they make various microcontrollers they make Cortex M's now you might have uh, heard about these uh, before like the CHR 500 uh, series for example they're like an eight. So this made um, all the news back in uh, October last year now, geez, 2022, so long ago. Uh, this CH32V003 is less than 0.1, and this is from uh, Patrick Yang, who is the uh, technical director at uh, WCH. So I could guess uh, you could give him a follow. Um, oh, look, sample purchase, LCSC have it. I was going to say, the chip doesn't seem to be available in uh, quantity at the moment. Um, this is the only uh, downside. Now nah, here it is, um, LCSC just have the uh, kit. I actually ordered my kit on uh, Tindy uh, along with the uh, programmer, CH Link, so you can get this for only a couple of bucks uh, more. So that just emulates like it's a serial um, interface uh, chip and then you get the uh, demo board like this and uh, yeah, it's really um, cheap as chips. This particular one, it's the uh, CH32V uh, 003 F4P6. It's a 20 pin uh, TSOP. There's nothing else on there. It's just that because it's a uh, serial interface. It's next to impossible to get a part number on that, but it's basically uh, just a USB uh, to serial interface. So yeah, this little uh, demo board is just got uh, some general purpose I.O. and uh, it comes with uh, some header pins as well. I just soldered uh, the header on the bottom, which is the uh, programming uh, interface, serial programming interface header. It's got a one LED, a power LED and a reset um, switch, I think it is. Let's have a squiz, see if we can actually get something running. But all the fuss is that it's a 10 cent Risk V microcontroller, right? Fantastic. We'll have a look at the features in a minute. But uh, somebody actually says here over on uh, Y Combinator that it's a drop in replacement for the STM 8S003 value line microcontrollers that are popular in China at their 20 cent price point. So this halves that price point. Right, so uh, yeah, it's like it's it's really good, right? It's looking really good. One we've got on our demo Ford is the 003 F4P6 here, and what do we get in here? It's a 48 meg Risk V uh, processor, 18 GPI bow pin, 16k of flash memory, 2k of SRAM. So you know it's quite usable. Um, one UART in it, one I squared C, one SPI. Uh, it's got an eight channel, 10 bit uh, ADC. How good that is, I don't know. I haven't really, you know, data sheet link down below. Um, you can get the the specs for uh, one general purpose uh, timer module, one advanced timer module, one system uh, tick, uh, two watchdogs and uh, partridge in a pear tree. Oh there you go, it's got an op amp uh, comparator, it's got sleep and standby modes, uh, programmable voltage uh, detector and a 64 bit unique ID. That could actually come in handy like a laser trimmed ID on the thing, that's pretty groovy and it's available in different packages. So we've got the uh, F4P6 which is uh, the TSOP 20 here. And down here, it seems like the uh, resources that we've got are the uh, data sheet um, and then a uh, application uh, manual. So here you go. Here's the data sheet there, but I won't go through uh, the details. But you know, it's it's quite uh, comprehensive. Then you've also got the uh, reference manual as well, which is instrumental in telling you how it actually uh, works and stuff like that. And that is. Yeah, that is very comprehensive. How many pages? 181 pages long. So that's how to drive all the registers and everything else to get everything uh, set up. So yeah, it's it looks as good as any 
um, you know, mainstream, uh, mainstream processor. So excellent. Hats off. And then they've got a uh, idea as well, which is called Moan River. I thought it was Moon River when I first said it. It's Moan River <laughs> Studios, MRS. And if you go to Moan River, and it looks like it's it's just for this. The RISC V, oh, it does ARM MCU. So it's just basically, I think it's their own um, thing against the backdrop of a round sky and a round place. Eye catching yellow and white lines, what? <laughs> Anyway, it's based on the Eclipse uh, GNU, which is the free open source development uh, environment. So I downloaded that and I installed it and ran it. Let's take a look, see how quickly we can get something running. Now, I've actually um, spared you the 15 or 20 minutes it took me to actually uh, figure out this thing. Um, but anyway, there are no drivers for the uh, program up for it. I just plugged it in. It appears as a uh, COM3 uh, serial port. There you are. You can see that in my uh, device manager down there, WCH link uh, serial. Although I haven't got the serial console thing working yet, but it just appears as a serial port. That's how it uh, programs it. And presumably, uh, you can get serial. Um, back out of it as well. So you'll have to forgive me, I haven't used Eclipse since a galaxy far, far away. So this is me as an Eclipse IDE dummy and also as a RISC-V dummy as well, because I haven't used a RISC-V processor before. So how quickly can I get something up and running? Well, all I did is uh, I actually opened uh, one of the uh, projects here. They, they give you a couple of zip files, so I just unzipped everything and they've got, we can go right in here like this, but we can go into here. EVT and then examples. I don't know what pub is, haven't had a look yet, but we get uh, examples for ADC um, stuff, DMA. So yeah, flash. I actually did the flash one first thinking it was flashing a LED. <laughs> I thought it was the, you know, the LED flasher example. It's not. Um, anyway, the GPIO uh, one, which we're going to play with now. I squared C, uh, IAP, uh, watchdog, um, OPA, that'd be the op amp. Would it? Uh, power, like low power mode examples. Spy, bus, um, system tech, timer modules, USART, watchdog. So it's got all the, you know, the examples of all the internal peripherals. Excellent. So anyway, I just selected the uh, GPIO over here. Now, uh, it just worked. It just worked. I simply installed the GPIO uh, toggle thing here, okay, and includes all the, you know, it's got all the includes and everything, and we can go through, like, there's a whole a whole bunch of them, right? But here is the main dot C, so it's done by WCH, they include debug H, and, you know, it's got a few extra things. Um, we, GPIO init uh, structure, we set up uh, the pin here, we set up the mode, we, it looks like you can change the GPIO speed, uh, that'd be like a slew rate uh, thing, probably, that'd be my guess. Once again, have not looked into the details. I'm just, in this video, we're just looking to see how easy it is to get something running. Here's the main program here. Now, it does actually do a printf. Um, so it's printf to the console. I haven't been able to actually get that printf out yet on my serial terminal program or in a uh, console um, thing here. Yeah, so all it's doing is calling GPIO toggle init up here, which is this uh, routine up here, which just um, sets the output uh, pins. You know, it it looks a little bit complicated to set up the I.O., but th this is what you expect in any uh, microcontroller. Uh, so the peripheral clock command, I don't know, don't know what's going on there. Once again, you'd have to, they're enabling something there. That's to do with the GPIO D. They do have different Here's the actual uh, pinout here, and uh, the TSOP20 is the one we want to look at. So the second uh, column there, these are all the pins. So they have uh, PD, and it looks like PA, so like port A and port D and port C as well. So we're actually dealing with PD here, port uh, D. Yeah, so that's why they're setting up by GPIO D there. And then, yeah, all they're doing is then using the, the built-in GPIO write uh, function, uh, which they uh, supply. And then they've just got a millisecond delay in there for 250 milliseconds. And then they're just uh, toggling uh, GPIO pin zero there. And I, sure enough, like if you just go up to flash like this, once again, I didn't install any drivers. I didn't, I didn't even set it up in the Eclipse uh, software. I just went download and it's, it's flashed it. It's actually flashed the chip, and sure enough, if you disconnect it, it says error and everything else, right? But the thing I spent 10, 15 minutes uh, trying to uh, figure out is not only does it have seem to have the wrong pin, um, because I was trying to flash the LED on here, and I'll show you that in a minute. I do actually have, you can see it, the LED's actually 
flashing there, okay? I do actually have a LED flasher, but it didn't work straight away because a, a, one, a thing that seems to be here, even right, if I go to project and I build it, okay, this is the, because I've actually already modified this code to make it work, but if I just go build all like that, okay, it, well, it's building, it's building, it's building, it will actually now do it, okay? It's generated the GPIO hex file down here, but if I just change something, and this is probably an Eclipse thing. If I actually changed something in here and just did build, it would not actually regenerate the hex file. Yeah, I, I spent 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out that it had the wrong hex file on there. When I changed the code here, it wouldn't do it. But we can actually go in there and we can project and we can actually clean the entire project, which it, and then it, it just gets rid of like all, all the stuff. So we've got like an absolute clean build like that. So we can go through, Here's all, here, here it is, here it is, right? It's going through all the compiler stuff. I can actually show you more of this, right? And it's using the uh, GNU uh, RISC-V-C cross compiler. So it's not specific to WCH. It's just using the, the regular free GNU RISC-V um, cross compiler, C cross compiler here. But of course, WCH provide all the includes and everything else. This is what the manufacturers have to do for their particular core uh, configuration. So building all that, it's doing the debug. Um, it's including the peripheral stuff for the USART because we're doing a printf. So they're invoking the uh, C linker here and they're generating um, GPIO toggle hex. It's all done. Now flash download this. It's not gonna flash anymore. And then, <laughs> Here we go. I'll prove it. Only silly me actually um, <laughs> mixed up one of the uh, data lines here and I, I was probing the wrong thing. So that, you know, I spent a few, like 10, 15 minutes actually trying to uh, solve that. But anyway, if we uh, probe D0 here, that's about 250 milliseconds. Let me, that's 50, that's now 100 milliseconds per division. There you go, ground leads just flapping around in the breeze there. That's why we've got our, um, we're just using the PC serial ground. So yeah, we're picking up all that crap. But yeah, good enough for Australia. There you go. It works. And it just, like, it worked out of the box. Like, it didn't have to install any drivers for this. It didn't have to select, even select the programmer over here. I just installed the thing. I went flash download. Uh, the only issue I had was, you know, like a clean build to make sure it generated uh, the new hex and stuff, and it worked just fine. So anyway, and let's see if we can uh, flash that lead. Okay, I'll show you how I got the lead to flash. Why they don't do, like, make the lead flash and just call it a lead flasher, I don't know. Why they chose pin uh, zero there? Because the lead is not connected to pin zero. If we go over here and have a squeeze, you can see that the lead's dropping through that via there. It's going over there. It's actually on D4. <laughs> so, yeah. So what we're going to do here, and we're going to go pin four. Once again, I did all this without reading uh, the manual, the data sheets, nothing. I just, like, not knowing anything about this. I just went in there. Yeah, that's obvious. Okay, we need to initialize uh, pin four here, and we need to go and toggle pin four down the bottom here, and... Once again, I'll do a clean build of that because I'm still not familiar with uh, this interface build. So it generates a new hex file. And normally it's not this long. Normally it'll, it'll do it in under a second as you uh, saw back at the uh, beginning there. But there you go. Can just dump this, flash, download. Maybe you can get it to download automatically. Not sure, but done. Why is it not flashing? It's not flashing. All right, this might be the Eclipse thing again, but I might actually have to save the file first, I think. I think you've got to save it. It won't take it from memory. So please leave it in the comments down below if that's just a you do, Dave. Of course, that's an Eclipse thing. I think I forgot to save that. So let's actually rebuild that and we'll see if uh, it, it should work now. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> that's when you come a gutter. Okay, there we go. It's definitely generated the toggle hex, but it's based on the new, the saved file. So we'll simply flash that download and ah oh, ah oh, can see it it's flashing there you go 250 milliseconds flash rate we can actually go back here let's let's modify that to what i had before 50 so i'll go file save can i just actually can i just do the uh just just do the build all again no that was faster 
that time, so I didn't have to do a clean build. It looks like it's generated the hex. Let's download that. So the key is saving if you're modifying your code. And bingo! Yeah, there it is. Flish flash, faster rate, 50 milliseconds. There you go. Brilliant! So that actually works an absolute treat. And if we want to see that uh, printf uh, stuff here, then we can just go into the output uh, console here and COM3, connect it, and there it is. Um, system clock, 48, you know, because it, it ran it twice, so that's why it uh, displayed it uh, twice, and GPO toggle test. So we can have a look at all the, like, include uh, stuff. So there you go, there's all the peripheral access layer, source file, right? So all you aficionados in there, right, can get all moist about that. There's all the header stuff, right? So this is actually defining, that'd be defining all the pins and stuff, what it uh, registers and all sorts of things in the RISC-V architecture here, right? So, and then it's got uh, debug um, stuff as well, because you can do uh, re real-time debugging. Let me know if you want me to do future videos on actually using this more, but here's the peripheral stuff. So we can go into, here's the ADC stuff. And down here we have like their uh, header files. So these actually, uh, you know, these are headers for defining all the uh, commands which you can do. There's our GPIO stuff. So here's all the, um, right, GPIO pin zero. So they're all defined. You can define all. And then these are the different, you can, you can read, write, reset bits, right? So that's where you can uh, get all that info from, or even without reading the manual, right? This tells you what you need to do. Um, so yeah, this is pretty good. I don't think there's a document for like a demo, a startup, like get into Blinky or something. Like, you know, I don't think there's a, uh, a there, there might be, leave it in the comments down below, but I, I didn't need it. I plugged in, downloaded GPIO toggle, figured out a few things with the Eclipse um, interface. Bob's your uncle. Right, so here's all the peripheral stuff. So you can get the source stuff. So here's the actual uh, routines for the GPIO, right? So here's here's where they're doing it. So yeah, and then there's some uh, system stuff over here. So, you know, you define your system uh, frequency here, for example. Like it's got different internal clocks, like you can define 8 megahertz and... Yeah, it looks like it's got 8, 24, and 48 internal. It's probably got a, a low frequency clock as well, I'd assume, because it's got like low power modes, doesn't it? Or is that just uh, standby modes. Once again, haven't looked at the data sheet, but all I wanted to do is see if this is legit or not, if I can actually use their IDE, which is the Eclipse IDE, which is totally legit, and they've just got all the stuff, and it just worked. So I am very happy with that. That gets a thumbs up. Well done. Unfortunately, it looks like at this exact time, you can't actually buy the chips, but I guess they're coming. They don't say what the quantity breakdown is for the 10 cents you probably have to order you know in the, in the thousands of but a risk five microcontroller 48 meg for 10 cents not too shabby at all so yeah that's a winner winner chicken dinner it's worth checking out it just gives you another uh tool another option in your uh development uh toolkit i highly recommend getting one and just having a play around with it if you ever need a you know really cheap but you know, reasonably powerful, 48 meg is uh, not too shabby. Let me know if you want me to do follow-ups. I can do like a, a, a toggle to see how fast it toggles and uh, stuff. I could do that right now. So we'll comment out the delay there and we'll see how fast it actually toggles. Once again, you could probably get it faster using assembler. So let's just see how fast it goes, just off the bat, um, using, you know, plain vanilla C. Almost a meg, that's not too fast. You could probably get faster if you did uh, the RISC-V uh, assembly. I'm sure you can, because I have seen somewhere in here, I'm sure I saw uh, RISC-V assembly, see if I can find it. So that looks like uh, RISC-V assembler. <laughs> that, that's assembler for all the money. So there you have it. Uh, that's the CH32. Uh, and we got to Blinky with that. And uh, no, <laughs> essentially like straight out of the box. So hats off to WCH. I'm looking forward to be able to like buy this on LCSC or, you know, the Holy Grail is to get it on DigiKey or something like that. But they typically don't carry like these um, uh, Chinese uh, specific manufacturers. Or, you know, even if you can buy it directly from the website, don't know why you can't buy a reel. By the way, you can actually go down here and you can sample and they want it, you know, the usual thing, company name and stuff like that, annual consumption. So yeah, I like that. I'm going to add that to my uh, design toolkit. I can use RISC-V processors, no workers. Um, and it's probably just as easy to, you know, we've got the examples for all of the peripherals in here. So I'm sure they'll work uh, just as well. And that's the best way to learn is to, okay, I need to read a value from the ADC, for example, where you load up the ADC example, you know, you, know, you can just see how that all works. You can play around with it and then you can include that Anyway, 
Thoughts and comments down below on this new 10 cent RISC-V processor. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.